Welcome back to the Global Business Report here on Rise News. Uh, Malaysian ICT firm Data Sonic Group, uh, Behad, has unveiled plans to invest about $100 million into Nigeria's uh, ICT sector with the aim of improving technological services of the country. Indeed. Well, this was revealed at the meeting between the top management of Data Sonic and the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment. The deal is expected to cover the production of secured passports, chip-based driver's licenses, international passports, integrated security, surveillance systems, auto gates with facial recognition systems, uh, which provide employment opportunities for Nigerian youth. And of course, uh, President, Association of Telecommunications Companies of Nigeria, or ATCAN, uh, Olushola Tenula is on the studio to share his thoughts on this. Good morning. It's good to have you with us. Good morning to you. So, all right, uh, let's talk about the investment. What will it cover in the real sense of the word? Well, uh, I believe it should cover more infrastructure development. I mean, uh, we have uh, members uh, that are keen to actually increase the level of investment if there's an enabling environment. I mean, uh, what does that mean? It means uh, they want to move away just from distribution or importing ICT products to actually either doing pre-assembly uh, and full manufacturing in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So this is good news, but it's not the only news. <laughs> mm. Well, good news, as you said. But specifically, how, do, how are we imagining this to benefit the Nigerian economy? Well, if they are going to invest $100 million in building up a fabrication uh, or a center of excellence, um, then I think that's a positive because we need to really start to get the youth engaged, uh, not at the end, but at the inception. Mm -hmm. And inception really is where the real know-how is. Uh, so they can develop skills and then get the experience uh, to obviously be able to turn their, that knowledge into them being able to produce the equipment from Nigeria that's then exported as opposed to just importing import ICT. Yeah. Because you know we're 100% dependent on mm. not only hardware but the software, which is unfortunate. So we need to break that uh, umbilical cord. Indeed. So what's the state of Nigeria's ICT sector currently in view of uh, your explanations? Well, if you look at the figures, uh, the figures that... Uh, um, statistics that's shared by um, Nigeria. Um, we obviously are growing in terms of our contribution to GDP, which is a good thing, and I think that we need a higher double digit than just the 10% uh, the, the or 11%. I think that's sort of it's tapering out. So the encouragement is right. You know, they can, we can do a lot more, uh, because when you look at the contribution itself, it's then, when you drill down and into numbers, it's then really a telco-centric push uh, and then it just means that a lot of us are just dependent on our mobile phone, mm -hmm. which is very obvious. We have a very low fixed line penetration, so yeah. you have to do everything's on the device. Um, and I think that when you look at other economies that are dependent on mobile devices and the penetration level, especially in Africa, mm -hmm. um, there's a huge opportunity to add more services that will increase that GDP contribution to our economy, mm -hmm. which means you know, more youth being employed, uh, a lot more different types of services that they can bring to foe and hopefully uh, reduces the unemployment rate. Very good. Well, if we were to look at how this news has been received by the market, is it too easy? Too easy. Is it too early to see uh, yeah. any changes? Yeah, I think it is too early to see. I mean, we have to look back at similar announcements that were made in the past, Samsung, for instance, and then mm. they changed their minds. Mm. They, I think they used the harsh uh, env business environment as a reason not to right. go ahead, which, is, which was rather unfortunate because people do like the Samsung products and they've been around in Nigeria for many, many years. So they're still in that distribution chain. Even when you look at the home appliances, they're still in that distribution chain. So we need to move away from that level to where there's a confidence to actually establish plants here or, and employ, obviously, uh, at the production level, Nigerians. Uh, and then we have had other uh, instances where we've had some real great discussions. I, I, I don't want to pick our names here, because it's really rather unfair. They're not giving me permission to do so. Right. But there's been discussions by the Indian government and Indian entrepreneurs who also want to do something similar. But it hasn't really resulted in anything. So I'm hoping that this early discussion with the, the new uh, cabinet, especially the Minister of Trade and Investment, which is very good. They've just uh, uh, got into uh, into position, and obviously their feet are practically less than 100 days under the table. So 
let's just see if it's not just, not just rhetorics and it's really the substance behind it mm -hmm. and the money follows the mouth. Uh, that's what we want. Uh, so that will uh, turn around the, the FDI that has really trended downwards yeah. and reverses itself. So it's just not just one drop in the ocean, but it's a flurry of raindrops, isn't it? That's what we require. Indeed. Yeah. So what would you say are the negative uh, issues around the Nigerian ICT sector so far? Uh, I, I know there's been a lot of strides uh, in terms of uh, the emergence of the uh, sector itself, but there are issues. So what yeah, are they? Yeah, there are plenty, and mm -hmm. I'll just start with some of the headwinds, the top ones, really. Right. And uh, the biggest one really is um, we're still very private sector driven. That's not a bad thing. And what the private sector really needs is certainty. Mm. Certainty in policy. Now, policy, there's two real big ones that are really slow down uh, people's propensity to bring in uh, investments and that's the inability to take the money out that's the forex issue and that's still a, a big issue um, not only in terms of the rate but in terms of actually access mm -hmm. to um, a, a, a nominal rate which we don't have mm -hmm. and the size of the projects that we are talking about I mean we're saying a hundred million dollars you would hope it's not just in distribution it would be in some real infrastructure yeah. FDI type uh, projects well you know they would expect a return on investment eventually so they need to see some stability from in terms of a country risk as well. All right. The other one is the multiple taxes. You know, I think that so yes, the company must have done this due diligence. <laughs> um, but uh, I think that one of the one for government and very quickly, you know, because yeah. I know some of the ministers themselves, they've got to put a stop to this ever notion that we are a cash cow. We're not a cash cow. We are an enabling environment. And okay. if you look at most economies. Anyway, you know, I don't want to, I'm not on Forbes, <laughs> and I'm not <laughs> suggesting I'm promoting Forbes. Please but, speak your mind. Oh. But, yes, if I do speak my mind, um, I think we've got things turned upside down. Extractive industries is important, but yeah. the future is not about extractive industries. It's actually ICT. Mm -hmm. It's about knowledge. And if we don't plug into that quickly enough, then we're actually going to be falling behind. So we need real incentives and policies that allows the private sector to f truly flourish yeah. and not just say, okay, yeah, you're making some money and I just want to also get my chunk mm -hmm. out of it at the front bit and not even wait for the outcomes, yeah. which is going to stifle um, any progress in, in terms of the increased contribution to uh, ICT uh, in the country. So, Tony, I'm glad you said that, actually. If we were to look at the ICT or even technology comparatively, how much do they contribute to the economy as it stands now? I think, you know, it would be a shame to say this on this program, but <laughs> our value add in terms of the Nigerian component is less than 1%. Mm. Most of it is, is foreign. And uh, even the support mechanism is foreign. And I think even the, the new Minister of uh, Communication, the Minister, he's actually alluded to that when he was the yeah. DG of NIDA, that we are so dependent on foreign imports and there's uh, capital flow or capital uh, outflow uh, to try and support software, for instance. So we have this huge dearth of uh, skill sets and possibly recognition. And some Nigerians, they do have the talents, but do they have the professional skill sets to actually make those worldwide standard products? Uh, and I think that focus should be on that so mm -hmm. that we do become the new India, for instance, because yeah. it doesn't happen overnight. It takes a number of years. And therefore, then you see the, the reluctance or the reversal of those just automatically buying foreign products, uh, not only in terms of the hardware, but software. And we are, I mean, sorry to say this, data is software. I mean, wherever you dice it, slice it, yeah. it's software. So we need to start to train and educate, not only at the territory level, but the secondary and even the primary level. Yeah. You know, because, you know, I think at my generation, we passed, but you know, I've dabbled, you know, and I've had a great experience in ICT over the years, but I think that's failing now. You know, we're not really uh, keeping that momentum um, up, and we need to. Otherwise, we will be left behind. Mm. Talking about uh, keeping up the momentum, how is your group as, uh, you know, engaging the government mm. in at least influencing the policies that uh, um, affect you, you know, stakeholders? Yes, it's, it, it varies depending on the leadership of the government that we've... Uh, uh, we've been encountered with. You know, we've been formed since 1993, so we've seen a number of government, both mm -hmm. military and civilian. Mm -hmm. And I think that there have been some cases where we've had it really right with the right leadership. Mm -hmm. We're hoping that we have the right leadership now, this new minister. Um, it's been quite a challenge to try and get the message across. Mm -hmm. 
because I guess, you know, with the reliance on oil and gas has been, the narrative is very easy mm -hmm. just to, uh, you know, push aside ICT. But I think that now we need a minister who has the air of the president. Uh, we need a, a minister that can really push a, a, a digital strategy for Nigeria. We don't have one right now. And we also need a new broadband plan, you know, because at the moment, the previous one that was done um, under General from Goodluck's administration yeah. has come to an end. So, you know, we're literally just feeling groping around at the mm. moment. And, you know, where you have a heavily private sector-led uh, industry, you do need some guidance, yeah. you know, and uh, that plan will come right handy at the right time. Um, so the minister has a lot on his tables, and we're going to try and push as hard. So ACON, what does ACON do? We push, put them on their toes, and I'll keep doing that as long as the president of ACON. Indeed. Yeah. Would it be fair to say that Nigeria is currently experiencing a growth in the implementation of tech startups? And if so, how do you th what do you think the relationship between our current level of ICT competence and and I guess visibility, uh, how do you think that contributes to the rate of uh, tech startups? It's, that's a good one. I, I think that uh, we are second behind South Africa in terms of the numbers of hubs. Um, but if you look at the reality, and I think I just read Andela's uh, laying off about 450 mm -hmm. uh, software engineers because yes. they're junior. Oh. They need experienced. And experience in ICT, I, I was a software engineer for 12 years. Yeah. And really, to gain experience is five, seven years, 10 years. You know, the real top engineers. And that's what they're looking for because AI, machine learning, they're not easy stuff. Oh. You, can't, you can't just pick up a book and read it. But the basic, uh, how to program a web application on your phone or, or, or uh, a web browser, those are quite easy. And, you know, but when you have a significant flood of junior engineers that can just do that basic stuff, mm -hmm. then what products are they churning out? Yeah. So really, the economics has to match the demand. So the good thing is that we have talent, great talent, yes. uh, but we need to convert that talent into real skills. Um, and I believe that if we get the right policies in place and they identify those, then we can then have a sustainable hub environment. Because mm -hmm. what you don't want is this early adoption. Yes. And then there's a chasm gap. Cousin Gap is a bit funded, but I think it's not, not, not really that. It's more yes. of the enthusiasm. And okay. if the momentum, momentum uh, sort of dies away, yes. then it falls back to um, you know, just having a handful of hubs that we start off with about four or five years exactly. ago. Exactly. Uh, very well, good. And on that note, uh, you know. Sadly. Sadly. Onuja <laughs> Latediola, <laughs> President Atkin, our pleasure having us, uh, we, uh, you, with us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.